the AI is, is to an extent an improved version of what you're teaching it. So if you're teaching it well, it's going to do a phenomenal job. If you're not teaching it too well, it's only going to enhance a little bit what you're teaching it or, or do it better essentially. In a nutshell, AI is, is definitely going to take over uh, Wall Street at some point. And those who don't use it are going to be left behind and they're going to get crushed uh, in marketing. <laughs>
Um, so no more, you know, jumping in on trade without a stop loss. Uh, the trade always has a stop loss. It's always automated. Um, and, and not only is the stop loss static, but it's now dynamic, um, which is one of the biggest challenges with, with trading. Uh, so um, the biggest challenge is, is, is the volatility of the asset. Um, why? Because every single day, it's different. So if the volatility of the asset was, was the same every single day, then everyone would make money, a lot of money, very, very easily. But because of that change in volatility, it becomes very, very challenging. Um, and so uh, you, you have to use some type of uh, AI or at least some rudimentary algorithm to, to quantify that volatility and to automate those trades for you. So, so um, in a nutshell, AI is, is definitely going to take over uh, Wall Street at some point. And those who don't use it are going to be left behind and they're going to get crushed uh, in my opinion. Mm. I would agree with that because um, like you just said earlier that when you see an opportunity, you have to grab it. And I think AI is kind of opportunity for us all, uh, for us all in terms of that it kind of has a prediction ability of uh, which gives us insights into what is going to happen in the market in the next. Um, I want to know uh, if you can list for our users that three type of uses that AI can give us in the investment landscape, like three advantages, I would say. Three advantages. Um, the, 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 the best one, in my opinion, is, is analyzing the volatility of the asset. I, I can't overemphasize that. It's the biggest challenge because if, if you think about it, if the same thing that happened yesterday happens today and also happens tomorrow, then trading is very easy, right? But, it, but, it, but that's not the case. And so you need a very complex model to, to essentially be able to um, uh, anticipate what's going to happen uh, that next day. Um, so you can't do that manually. So it has to be a very advanced algorithm, uh, ideally an AI model that, that can be trained and, and think the way you want it to think. Um, so that's the number one benefit. The second benefit, uh, of course, uh, is automating uh, risk management, right? So risk management is historically, uh, 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 I hate to say this, but almost a foreign concept for US-based asset managers. Uh, traders in um, the Middle East, uh, in Europe, uh, Latin America, um, uh, Southeast Asia, a lot of people globally use stop losses, but for some reason, US-based asset managers don't use stop losses so that they can have uh, portfolio drawdowns of 44%, which is absolutely crazy. So um, you obviously have to have stop losses, uh, but the benefit of using AI to do these stop losses is that these stop losses will be uh, dynamic uh, and adapt to the changing volatility. So um, you can easily have an algorithm that, that has a static um, um, a, a static stop loss, but the challenge is, of course, being able, able to have a dynamic stop loss because of that changing volatility. So you can't maintain that same stop loss as a change. So AI definitely makes... Uh, um, um, get, gives us an advantage in that sense. Um, of course, the same thing happens, and this is my third point, to take profits, right? So the first, the second point is risk management. Uh, the, fir, uh, the third point is generating alpha, right? Taking, um, um, making money, right? Um, so the take profit, likewise, has to be dynamic. It cannot be static, and it's uh, extremely difficult to have a dynamic in a manual sense. It has to be done by AI uh, because... Uh, uh, it's uh, the value changes. So we're going to be, for example, 1% every single day. It'll be 1% today, 0.5% tomorrow, 2% the next day. Um, and, and that um, essentially can only happen with AI. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. I think uh, you are right that we are, we are, we, sh we have, we have to have a very advanced model in AI uh, because the market I think is always fluctuating, is always changing. And right now, we don't have algorithms to, you know, kind of uh, detect that kind of change. So uh, tell me, Mina, are, uh, as a person who is into coding, uh, do you think that Word can have that kind of an algorithm uh, to for the, in the trading world? Can yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so we have it, and um, and I've seen other firms outside the U.S. have it. Uh, we use it ourselves, um, and I've seen I've seen several overseas, none in the U.S. though. Um, so um, I think it's going to take some some challenges 
to convince US-based asset managers um, to, to do something differently from what they've been doing for decades. Uh, but I think for the most part, the, the rest of the world is, is very receptive of accepting this change and adapting and, and um, trying to push forward with it. Uh, there are only, unfortunately, handful forms that use AI um, and, and that teach how to use AI uh, to, um, uh, to pursue trading and financial markets. Uh, most AI um, uses are for different things, uh, other different things, but, but I think ultimately it will, it will take over for finance because the results are just unparalleled. Um, so those who don't have that, I, I think, I think will, will die, unfortunately. Yeah. That can happen because if you don't adopt, it, it's simple, the survival of the fittest. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And it's, it's all about, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. No, no, no. I, I'm interrupting. Sorry. Um, go for it. No, no, please. I want to hear. Um, about yeah. Yeah. Uh, AI automates, you know, trades around the clock. Uh, if someone's return is five, seven percent a year and someone else is 30 percent, um, you know, why would someone go to uh, an old conservative fund manager who's, who's down this year when our investors are up, right? So it's, it's the, the, the math um, uh, speaks volumes. And, and as we continue, as we grow, uh, that's only going to uh, uh, continue down the line. And, and, you know, this is just the beginning for us. Um, God knows who else might come up with a better AI model than us or, or what we are able to come up, you know, five, 10 years from now. Um, so anyone who's very set in stone as far as what they're doing, they think, you know, that this is a, they can never change their investment strategy. Investors will simply not go to them anymore. Um, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's a numbers game. This is kind of enlightening actually, uh, that we all have to change because if we don't change, we're gonna obsolete from the market. And the biggest thing that can, uh, I think in the investment landscape is uh, how you're adopting the technology, which is around you and, and it is going to benefit you. Yeah, yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's inevitable. Um, so so you definitely have to change, otherwise, uh, you're gonna fall behind. Uh, that's the thing with with tech the technology sector, right? Uh, people view us as a fund, but I view us as a technology company, uh, because the, the fund the fund is, is is nothing really without without the AI. Um, so so um, that's the thing with the tech sector. You you have to always adapt. You have to always change. Uh, you know, who knows what might come out tomorrow and if we don't accept it then we're going to be left behind so we're always trying to improve the algorithm I, you know yesterday i think i slept at like seven in the morning uh just because i was i was coding up on like giving the algo a, a major upgrade and you know i, I couldn't stop and and so uh, even even though we have a decent product um i would say more than decent but for now let's simplify let's say we have a decent product who knows what what's gonna come up with who's gonna come up with a better product you know uh uh two years from now so we're always always adapting and then I would strongly suggest that for all asset managers. Mm, that's interesting. So uh away from uh, moving away from our general discussion, I wanna know about Taurus Capital. Uh what you guys are doing, how you guys are using AI. Um first I wanna know about this and then we will move towards your Genesis story. How did you guys start it? Yeah. Um so how we're using AI is basically to automate everything from A to Z, um, from analyzing the asset, uh, the volatility of each asset varies greatly. So the AI analyzes that, um, two, we have a stop loss and a take profit with every single order. Everything's about risk management. And I didn't realize that I had an edge until I was working with T3. I thought what I was doing was normal. And by normal, all I did was basically use stop losses and that saved me a lot of losses and allowed me to capture a lot of profits. And so, uh, that alone, uh, I think in part was, um, uh, uh, very helpful in, in, in me being promoted. And so I realized that this is a must have for our algo. Um, so, uh, it has a, a dynamics of loss. Um, of course, a dynamic take profit. Um, it behaves differently from, uh, trading currencies, for example, to shorting crypto to indices, um, because it analyzes the new data that we feed it every single day. Um, and we offer investors 2.5% every single month, which is very different, uh, than most asset managers are um are performing uh so most wall street um funds are down this year but we're actually up 30 percent um and investors get the two point five percent on a monthly basis and uh it is a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar minimum commitment uh so it's only a product for 
acquire the investors, although we do have some um, ideas down the line to onboard non acquired investors. Um, but we will have to get some um, approvals. Uh, but in a nutshell, that's that's what we do. We're trying to change the game. It's it's a very low standard uh, that Wall Street has, and and it's been like that for decades. And no one wants to change. And uh, it's it's just uh, frankly absurd that it that, that that you know you have you have assets that go up and down all day around the clock. You know, 365 days a year basically. Um, and and you know you only make five percent by the end of the year. That's ludicrous. That's that's insane. Um, so, so I hope, you know, that, that what we're doing is only the start. So. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I completely understand, uh, mm-hmm. what you are saying that people are kind of, uh, you know, uh, are not that easy in adopting technologies. Uh, after COVID, yeah, kind of space changed, but I don't think so that much. Yeah, um, people, people, you know, they, they, they want to do what has worked for centuries, but you know, it's, uh, um, that's, it's a very old school mindset. And, uh, I think they'll, you know, they'll, they'll eventually, um, uh, be out of the game, uh, in a couple of years as AI is, is more widely used. I really hope that, that people change their minds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to know about the genesis story of uh, Tardis Capital. How did you guys started? Uh, were you have were you having a remote team to develop the whole AI model? You developed yourself. Or did you have an in-house team? How did this all start? It. Yeah. So um, you know the startup world is a very very difficult world. Um, uh, it's been very stressful at times, um, especially in the beginning. And right now we're a little bit more. Uh, stable certainly but in the beginning it was excuse me um i was basically doing everything um and starting off um i didn't know how to recruit the team members because i, I you know no one was bringing anything proprietary i was the one who had all the proprietary information and so um i realized that either you know i get people who are bringing some proprietary uh, and give them an equity stake or you know just start off with people being interns and so uh decided to go with the intern route just because uh, to the best of my knowledge, no one else had any good strategies or indicators or anything like that. And so I uh, decided to go off with uh, hiring interns. And so I had a team of interns and most of them um, ultimately left um, just because uh, uh, the, the work uh, requirements for a startup, uh, people think, uh, you know, they want to work nine to five. This is a startup. You have to work around the clock. Uh, we have to believe to prove ourselves. So it was very difficult. A lot of people left. Um, and, uh, I was privileged to have just a few people stay, uh, especially Emma and, um, uh, you know, she, she helped me grow the company, um, um, many, many great ways. And she's even relocated to Tampa here for, for the role. And, um, so, uh, in the beginning it was very difficult and most people quit, uh, because frankly, I think most people are weak, uh, from being honest, um, I breathe, sleep, uh, eat. A lot of the AI algorithm about around the clock. As, as I'm chatting with you right now, I'm thinking about you know the a few upgrades that, that I would like to finish, and and so so I obsess with with what we do, and I think that's the requirement for one to grow in their field. If you're not obsessing with your work product, then you're just going to be like everybody else, and you're never going to grow. So that was a mindset that I think was a little bit difficult for me to share with with you know my colleagues, uh, and that's why most of them quit, and the one who stayed uh, was. Uh, um, Emma, um, as, as well as, uh, another, uh, individual as well, Miriam, she, she's been helpful as well. And, um, but, uh, but yeah, this is, this is the mindset that I have. And, and that's the mindset that every startup team should have. And if you don't have it, you're, you're, you're gonna, uh, get out of the game. And, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, it, it, it grew and right now we're, uh, a lot more stable we've been growing our, um, investors and, um, certainly our returns and, um, it's easier now, uh, but back then it was a lot more difficult. And I'm I'm kind of thankful to an extent that everyone left because now, frankly, we don't we don't have to pay them. Um, you know, the, the, the everything is resolved, and uh, we've accomplished a lot of goals. And um, so it's it's been uh, it's been a, a very uh, turbulent ride, I suppose, uh, but very grateful, a uh, great experience. That's kind of very interesting. Um, I completely uh, agree with you, actually, because in a startup, uh, it's kind of difficult 
uh, to you know stabilize it and for that you need a passion you need uh, i would say enthusiasm a 24/7 uh, kind of working that you are ever evolving you are ever changing and uh, seeing your passion towards a sort of i really wish you success uh, in leaps and bounds because uh, i it is hard to find people like you who are uh, trying to change the world for good with technology thank you thank you uh, yeah it's, it's it's a very difficult mindset it's very hard to teach it to people either they have it or they don't and that mindset should be something that they apply to anything that they're very zealous about um but yeah uh, i definitely have it and i definitely has it um and definitely i i think it's a um if if if, if you ever come across a startup where the founder uh and the early um stage employees are there and not um they're not passionate or obsessed with the, with the work product in the company that to me is an immediate indicator that it's just not going to last statistically speaking they're they're uh uh they're, they're about to fail I I completely agree because when you have to make things work you need a passion because uh, I think in the hard times passion is only the force that derives you when you don't have anything there is only passion and your honesty towards your work which derives you correct absolutely and I I can agree more <laughs> thank you so uh, i want to know from all of this uh, our discussion that people are reluctant to adopt technology um i want to know that uh, uh, i read it somewhere that uh, that is ai uh, democratizing the world of investing especially for those who don't have access to uh, access uh, to knowledge or i would say tools like uh, other wall street analysts have or investors have yeah absolutely um ai is basically uh, advanced in in whatever you teach it right so uh whatever you're training your model to do uh so you can train it for high frequency trading like what we do you can train it um um to value models early on and and find uh very undervalued stocks early on you can you can trade it to to uh excuse me train it to do whatever it is that you want to do so um but the the end game is always the same if you're training your model properly i came across um i think it was a study i forgot the name of the company that did the study and it said that sometimes ai is uh, uh less impactful than what people think and i couldn't help but disagree internally um i didn't show this publicly not you know trying to start uh, uh, an issue online on, on linkedin or anything like that but uh, i thought that was a great mistake mm-hmm. um uh, because it's it's about how you are training your ai right what are you teaching it to do how are you training are you teaching it to trade without stop losses well that's probably going to be an issue right and then you'll say oh you know that that study failed uh, the ai didn't perform well uh well maybe if you taught it how to tr- uh trained it how to trade with a stop loss and it's a profit on a dynamic stop loss not a static one and a dynamic take profit then perhaps your ai would would do well um and and uh you recant that study for example so and i don't know the details of the study i'm i'm just making a point that the ai is is to an extent an improved version of what you're teaching it so if you're teaching it well it's going to do a phenomenal job if you're not teaching it too well it's only going to enhance a little bit what you're teaching it or or do it better essentially um but assuming you're doing you know, superb risk management at least strategy uh the ai absolutely take over um and and will improve um any anything that it does i think i think that should be undisputed and if it's not for somebody then you're probably using it wrong yeah i can completely agree with that because i also hear uh, a lot of claims uh, a lot of startups and uh, from a lot of startups i would not say startups a lot of people um come to us and are like that ai is going to take jobs ai is going to automate things um even there are <laughs> you're right there articles present that how ai is going to be the next scary thing or uh, there uh, there are robots shown um i don't completely agree with that i completely agree with you that how you train it it uh, this uh, how it is going to perform this is the whole sure. thing so sure. it's it's actually a very refreshing point of view yeah uh some people just want to blame the ai they don't want to even get into it and they want to learn it and they don't want to 
you know, uh, uh, funded or, or, you know, waste time on us, we'll automatically dismiss it. Oh no, it's not going to be as good as a human, uh, or you always need that human intervention. Um, mm. no, you don't always need that human intervention. Uh, you're not using your time properly if you're constantly intervening. Um, uh, and if you haven't explored this, if you're getting bad results, then it's probably your fault. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Uh, it was really nice to talk about the uh, and have a refreshing point of view on AI. Um, thank you for that, Anna. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my pleasure. Um, I'm definitely happy to uh, discuss um, AI and uh, definitely happy uh, to have been here and uh, really appreciate this. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.